the discovery of Martin was quite accidental. I happened to go into the old archive room in the museum to see what was in there. When the wind started blowing and the door began to bang and my professor uh, found this irritating and locked the door. I didn't want to uh, call attention to my predicament so I sat down and pulled a, a volume out of the shelves and started reading. And it just happened to be Samuel Martin's first journal. And I sat there reading it till five o'clock when David MacDonald um, came and checked the door and discovered me. And I've been stuck with Martin ever since. The um, Martin letters and journals are clearly the most significant documents in the library. And uh, naturally, anybody who's interested in the history of New Zealand will start with them because that's virtually when the history of New Zealand begins. He's the first man who wanders about and actually describes what he's seeing. And that is a wonderful way to begin doing research. Sheer activity going on, uh, people talking to people and writing down their impressions for the benefit of people, what, 12,000 miles away in London. Martin was a very good uh, journalist. He really did describe things as he saw them. Um, one of the things that fascinates me is his long friendship with Te Moringa. He spells him Temeranga. Tim but on one occasion he set out um, down to um, uh, Toronga with uh, Te Moringa. Uh, in the course of which he discovered that Te Moringa's sister had been murdered and uh, Te Moringa was going to lead a, a war expedition against the, the culprits, which didn't in, in the event happen. But that particular friendship um, makes it perfectly clear that Martin was capable of striking up friendships with people of all sorts. He also learnt the language uh, to such an extent that he was able to preach in it for an hour at a time in Maori. That was impressive. It may be that uh, his uh, Maori was not as um, fluent or as idiomatic as uh, William Williams and Henry Williams, but he was certainly um, very proficient in the Maori language. Barton had no great hopes for the older generation which is why he um, hoped with the establishment of schools to um, develop a Christian community of people who were habituated to listening to uh, the Christian message and would naturally be impressed by it. And uh, so, in fact, the conversion would um, really await the passage of another generation.